Man, there was one day on my way to work. I I think. What is that? Like, is it an Irish show? Scottish show? Dairy Girls? Yeah, Irish. Northern Ireland or whatever. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think I was watching, like, a handful of episodes of that. I was driving into work, and I, like, broke into an Irish accent that was perfect. And I was like, holy freaking <sighs> mothballs, Batman. I can do an <laughs> Irish accent perfectly. And I was like, this is going to be amazing. Like, I, I can bust this out. I know. It's like, I'm going to be able to, uh, like, like I'm going to be able to do, like, D&D campaigns or something or mm-hmm. characters. Like... I can now do an Irish accent. Like it like, and it was like one of these things where I was like, ha- has this just been in my brain forever? Like we have I- like Irish heritage. Yeah. So it's like, like, <laughs> which is like, does that play a role in anything at all? <laughs> yeah. Probably that not. Is a, yeah. It's, yeah. Your accent has nothing to do with your blood, but yeah, go ahead. No, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a predisposition to be, I don't know. So anyway, um, yeah. So, but then, I, but then I lost it and I've never been able to find it again. You, for a brief moment, you knew the name of Ireland. Yes, I yeah. did. For like a spell. For a spell. Uh, that was like when we did the Lenovo thing. Thing, uh, and they were like, you're going to have to do like a Yoda voice. And I was like, excuse, excuse me, what now? And it was just like, well, yeah, we're going to point a camera at you in a room of like 50 people and you're going to have to do a Yoda impression like 10 times in a row. Sound good? It's like, um, I don't know what makes you think I can do it, but uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like, the moment came and it was like, Jay, you just have to be Yoda right now. And it was like, and then I could do it. And I'm not sure I could quite do it as well ever since. But like in the moment, I felt like I was really good. I did it, man. I, I did it. <laughs> not, so, not so bad. Not yeah. so bad. I know. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was such a whirlwind of a day. And uh, yeah, I mean, that was like one of those moments too where I was like, oh my gosh, Jay's being so put on the spot right I now. I was like, I was like, don't let the, don't let the attention shift to me. Don't let the attention shift to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, did, like, did that make you like feel sick with nerves, or were you okay? I, I mean, I remember the, the so the, at, least, the, at the very least they had told us a day in advance that I was going to have to do it. So I remember just be like, I was taking a shower later that day, and I just stood in the shower for like half an hour doing the Yoda voice, like over and over and over. Like you gotta, like you gotta, like do something, man. You gotta practice it. <laughs> right. Okay. You, you need to be yeah. able to bring it. There was this like, there's this like, like humph sound he does, like. <laughs> <laughs> That I could, that was, that's like my, that was like my, like, um, like entry, like my entry sound. Yeah. The, hmm, hmm, yeah. That's Use a real thing. Though. I must. Yeah. Right. No, that's a, yeah. yeah. They, hmm. I think that when, when trying to break into accent uh, of some kind, Ugh. like there's like a phrase or word or something that people use that sort of like gets them like the cadence, the rhythm, which I suspect is what I had that day with my, my Ireland thing, uh, that I just then like, whatever it was, I just lost it. But yeah. Um, yeah, no, you did a great job though. Well, thank I was, you. I was very thank proud you. of you. Yeah. yeah. Put on the spot, put on the spot and in, in, in proud display. I mean, this is the thing like going back to, uh, like childhood plays. Like I, I got to, got to be the lead in a couple of plays when I was a kid in elementary school and stuff, but like, like, for the most part, you weren't acting. You were just saying words loudly. Yeah, like, right. It was, it was the fact that you memorized the lines at all was all there was to it. I, I, you know, and I think this is literally what has like broken me a little bit in terms like as I got older towards uh, like ever wanting to do like drama or like be a part of like that program or something was was sort of this belief that like it's like. I don't know how to act. All I've ever done is just memorize the words and said them all like when it was my turn to say them. Right. You know, and and go and go. And looking back on it too, it's like, you probably could have just like messed up and like everybody just would have thought it was like adorable and cute. And people probably would have just felt more bad for you than like upset that you ruined their show. Yeah. (laughs) Turns out the stakes for a second grade performance, second grade performance of the candy cake kid versus bubblegum Bart. Not, not very high. Not very high. Yeah. Yeah, I think it had like 13 lines too. So like it really, it's like, and that was the lead role. That was the lead role and it was not that many yeah yeah but i did do it what's poppin everybody hello and welcome to popcorn culture my name is ben carlin and i am your host here with me today is my brother jay who will be in every episode. I've been in all 200 of them so far. What? What? Air gun noises. (laughs) Pretty unbelievable. I can't believe we are 200 episodes in. 200. That's so many episodes. It really is. I cannot believe it. It seems like it has flown by. You know, there have been some little decades in there that seemed like they took forever. And I was just like, I can't believe we're still in the 150s. Like, are we ever getting out of here? And then it was like, boom, we're flying. We're at 200. No, I know. I mean, Crazy. even it, it's, I mean, this is the, the mantra of parenthood. It's like the, the days are long, the years, the are, years short. are short. And I feel like that's exactly how, 
uh, doing the the pop has been like it, like in my mind a lot of times I will like go to bring up a story I'm like no I think we talked about that like in episode 17 like yeah. and it's like seven that was like years ago probably it's like, you could use it's, a refresher it's probably safe or okay to revisit uh, a topic or a story that that we've once discussed in the past however however uh, you know it still is it all feels so recent it, it, but anyway thank you guys so much for being along for the ride with us it has been such a hooting and hollering good time it sure has been in fact to celebrate why don't we have a corny joke what i know I what know. is today what is today I all right lay it on me yep all okay. right are you ready ben yep, i'm ready why can't you hear a pterodactyl going to the bathroom i think i know the answer is it because the p is silent the p is silent yeah. oh that's so good <laughs> that's so good i was like i never know these and i was like Pater, Pater. Pterodactyl. I know it. I know it. It's because the P is silent. That's a really, yes. really good one. A, All right. A good also, quality down joke. in the comments right now, do you remember the movie The Land Before Time? Do I? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About Littlefoot and the the, the sharp tooths and the long necks and the, all that him. stuff. Yeah, okay, yeah. so everyone right now has to go in the comments and write down how old you were you were when you realized that uh, Sarah, the Triceratops's name was her name was Sarah because she was a Triceratops. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I learned last week. Yeah, right. <laughs> like 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 that recently. Never in a million years because it's like out of all the names, they're also like. Like quirky and fun, and then there's Sarah, and there's nothing wrong with the name Sarah yeah. at all. It's just out of out of a lineup of dinosaurs, you know, you're sort of like, well, well, surely there was something else, you yeah. know, that they could have could have come up with. Sarah sounds so common. I want to say one of them was like Petrie as well. Petrie, Petrie's yeah. the the pterodactyl, but I think like just the way you say Petrie is like it's like you pronounce the P. It's like Petrie, like Petit. Like, D, like D, there's D, like the, D. the words like p- pterodactyl is spelled with a silent P and then the T. Yes. So I always thought like, are they trying to do something there? Or are they like making fun of the silent P by calling him Petrie? Like where you just pronounce the P and the T. <laughs> right. And it feels like it. It feels like that's exactly what they're going for. But otherwise it sounds so similar to, and I, I mean, I have no idea where Jurassic Park and Land Before Time. Yeah. Like lined up with my own viewing experience or yeah. comprehension of the story. Um, but like Petri dish feels like the type of thing you may have like taken the blood from the mosquito in uh, Jurassic Park oh, that you yeah. would have then used for like the cloning with frog DNA or whatever to mm. create dinosaurs in the present. Um, so like Petri just seems like such a scientific word. Yeah, it also does. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's that. I think that's I feel been like your this, rationale for his name the whole time. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. so as as like a five year old, I was like, oh Petri, like Petri dish. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, yeah, there it is. A, a word I totally knew what it was because I went to chemistry camp. Yeah. <laughs> I think the for the the Sarah Sarah the Triceratops. I remember it like whenever I like realize that's the name or whatever i like think about that character i always remember like when i first realized that and it was like uh, as ever like way after the fact like um but more so recently than last week more recently than last week but like as a teenager or something okay but I, it's like there i remember there being this like mental rundown in my head of being like oh sarah was called sarah because of triceratops and then there was this like panic that like okay wait a minute have i embarrassed myself by not knowing this information as far as anyone knows i knew this information the entire time that's what it's gonna get what we're gonna go with i knew this immediately as a child and it was obvious okay right no one knows i didn't know cool we're good <laughs> right 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. now gotta replay every <laughs> conversation i've ever had about this about this land before time yeah <laughs> this is also one of those things though where i would say that like i could park the extremely goofy movie in a, in a similar you know lot so to speak oh, okay uh where i would say like this was a movie that clearly we purchased we had the vhs we wore it out mm-hmm. you know like it just like lived and breathed in our house and so in my mind this was a part of all uh like all, all kids around our ages like upbringing and they all watch these films and like the land before time is one of those that I like I don't feel like since being a little kid I've never had any impulse to go back and rewatch it I've never really seen other people talking about it and I would even go so far as to say I barely remember the characters names at all if we hadn't discussed it like on a on a call a couple like like last week yeah. or something um so it's like it's like talking about it right now i'm like is this like the most unrelatable discussion 
ever. Oh yeah, or, people or, are like, what is the land before time? It's what, like I, I, I don't never, even I never watched. I watched Dinosaur. I watched. No one watched Dinosaur. First of all, <laughs> people will blame the Emperor's New Groove for ending the Disney Renaissance. False. It is the movie Dinosaur. It, like, if you're like, wait a minute, I've never even heard of that. Exactly. Like, it was Disney's first stab at a fully computer animated movie, and it features dinosaurs, as you might imagine. There's even a ride at Animal Kingdom that you can um, ride for the very near future. And then it's going away because, uh, one, it is uh, weirdly scary. Uh, it, it is pretty terrifying. Two, yeah. extremely bumpy and not super comfortable. And three, uh, just like no one knows what dinosaur is. Like, you could be waiting in line and just be like, it's so cool they made a dinosaur themed ride for Animal Kingdom, but like, what's it have to do with Disney? Never mind, they made a whole, it's based around a whole movie. Um, so yeah, dinosaur, terrible movie. The real, the real fall of the Disney Renaissance, you, you if know, you ask me. Well, and what's interesting about this, because the other big discussion that we had in a movie that has eluded both you and I for, mm. for years and years and years, uh, falls Don't say into it, this, ben. huh? Don't say it. You're gonna, Am I, mean, I going to do it wrong? You're gonna, no, you're gonna. It's fine. It's just people are gonna. We're gonna, just gonna be outed. You know? Oh yeah, I know. We are. Yeah, yeah we're we're about to do that exact thing. Um, which I this is this has been like on our on our idea board for a video for a very long time for Super Carlin Brothers. But it's just like the movie Treasure Planet. Yeah. Um, is I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it either. People people <laughs> say like people who I trust who are like it is a great movie I and know. it's like one of these things like we're very frequently like on the weekends like I'll plop down with Allie and like we'll be like looking for something to watch and like it's sort of like should I watch Treasure Planet tonight? Like, and I, and I am so sure at this point in time. Like, this is one of those things where, uh, at, like, I would place Doctor Who in a similar column where it's like, I, for whatever reason, I have this haziness, this hesitance to, like, give it an honest shot. Right. And I'm like, there's no way in the world all of these people love it and it's not amazing. Which right. Which means that, like, I am missing out on getting to watch something for the very first time. Do you feel like, like, your, the, the expectation for you to like it has been set so high that you'll be like, nervous watching it that you don't like it enough or something i have no idea i have no idea because like one of the things that i feel like i was doing early on and and i think it was reflected in a lot of our review scores uh when it came to like watching new fandom related movies and doing a review here on the super carlin brothers channel is that like i feel like every time something new came out it was always like i felt like a responsibility to find the ways to love it even if i like i watched it was sort of like I don't know if I I don't know. Like it was almost like I was trying to understand more what the outside perspective of the film would be rather than what my own personal perspective of the film even was like, Um, like if you thought the outside perspective was going to be negative, like you were trying to be like more favorable and like a, like there are still ways in which you can enjoy it. Right. Like, like, like let me, let me attempt to find, where where it persevered where where it actually did a good job right r- versus you know like maybe being like like harsher and then i think somewhere along the way it was kind of like i, I sort of started to like like go out of the theater experience and be like ben sometimes when you leave the movie theater you are like enamored with every second of every frame that you just saw and and i can go back to like my my examples of that like the ones i always i always hail back to is the force awakens and infinity war which were just two movies that like from from the word go to end i just loved them yeah like when i was in the theater it was like i was i was like eating popcorn i was like like enthralled it was just sort of like this is awesome like it's funny it's cool it's like they're doing like the right balance of everything i just loved it um and it's like it's like that is my completely like you can disagree with me and that's completely fine because it's like when it comes down to it i was the one in the Seat, I was the one enjoying the experience and and that's all that really matters like right. it's sort of like you can disagree with me and for and have completely valid reasons of your own but like this was something I had to have eventually enough faith in myself to where like when I watched a movie to like step away from it and be like I don't think I loved it you know right. like I, I, I don't think I like I, I walked out I wasn't entertained I didn't think about it like there were there you know like there, there wasn't a whole lot that I that I'm able to go back to yeah um, but like that, I think took me a long time. So I feel like if you watch my review scores, yeah, I feel like you'd watch them sort of like kind of fall off of a cliff right. a little bit where like, I feel like in the beginning it was like for me to go like sub 85 out of a hundred on anything was unheard of. It was like, it was like 85 would be be me being like highly critical. And then like eventually then it was suddenly like, suddenly it was like, no, never mind. It was like, it was like, no, never mind. You can give something at 43. Yeah. You know, if you don't like something, just trash it. <laughs> <laughs> just that. that there is like a certain thing where like you're you're the one giving the review and like conceivably people could be watching and forming their opinions based on like the things you say about it but then it's like there's like this self-conscious 
feeling of like, well, do do I just need to like how much of what I'm doing is like just giving my honest opinion versus like am like what if my honest opinion doesn't match the greater critical like perception of this film and then I'm seen as like a fraud or something yeah, exactly like, you know and that's- I'm, I'm trying to guess what the reception will be and form my opinions based on that not like which is which is a ridiculous stance to take because like you as someone who forms the opinion who helps who's doing the review and who lots of people will watch you might help like you might like whatever your honest opinion is is okay because certainly other people are going to have enjoyed it in the way you did or unenjoyed it in the way you did well and i think you're exactly right and i feel like i feel like i bore witness to this a little bit following the the ending of game of thrones where i feel like th- there was a bunch of people i've seen like discussion kind of follow around and and this could game of thrones ending could completely end up being like star wars pre star wars prequels eventually where like at some point in time people are going to be like no 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 like they had a point like you, you see what they were doing like like, like this made sense for these reasons. Like we didn't appreciate it at the time because it's not what we wanted to see, but like, like eventually whatever. So that could be, you know, 20 years in the future. This, could, yeah. this, this whole fr- like fragment of the podcast may age incredibly poorly. But anyway, I remember the, the few days following there was, there was like these people who I saw like, like attempting to be like, no, it was amazing. Like, like everybody else is not understanding like the brilliance of what they pulled off here. And I was like, I didn't like it, you know, like I, it was not what I expected. It was, it was a really strange turn. Like for these reasons, that reasons, I think this person should have done this. Like, I, I don't know like what, like why they ended up like going in this unusual direction with it and like, you know, like whatever. So, um, but then like, I feel like as time went on, it was sort of one of these things where it seemed like, it seemed like at first there was like a bunch of people who were trying to, who were thinking they were almost having like the, the like academic interpretation of the, the yeah. final themes of the story. And, and supporting it on that basis. And I feel like as time went on, it was sort of like, no, yeah. like it doesn't, it doesn't no. real. Like I like to go back and like try to find uh. some of the people who I'd seen make these comments and be like, like, I remember we talked about it. You said you loved it. You said you loved it. You said the blue eyes were, were, were way back in season two were a predictor of this thing. And that, you know, you thought it was brilliant. It's like, there wasn't enough build up. Yeah, I do. There was this weird feeling going around the final season of Game of Thrones where I think like, as far as like three episodes in, like not a lot had happened. And it's like, this is the final season. And it was like, okay, every week it'd be like, that one was a little shaky, but you know what? Like, I know we're going to end on such a big note that like these first three episodes, like there was just a lot, there's a lot of exposition. They got to get out of the way. Well, Game we're just of Thrones- getting rid of all that stuff first and then there's going to be some big battle and then it's going to be this and then it's you know it's going to be crazy right right but the story taught us patience i think in storytelling from like the visual medium where it was sort of like it's like look sometimes they're going to make you work for it but the payoff will be worth it right and it's like you have to set up everything. Sometimes it's a little bit closer to like reading a book than it is to like watching a film where like where like normally when you're watching a TV show, they're trying to keep you entertained. They're trying to give you like cliffhangers. They're trying to give you like, you know, plot like like if you were to, to distill out like like um like a lot of um what are they called? Like soap operas, for example. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, that that's like the basic premise is that like they can they can constantly like find a way to like bring about like a new twist, a new a new like thing to like keep things interesting, a new way to be like, oh, no way. This person's now with that person. Like what? What? Nobody ever saw that coming. And it was just like, they can just constantly sort of like, like do the same trick over and over and over again. Uh, but I feel like what you were witnessing with this was like a slower version, a slower play out. And, and so I think, yeah, entering the last season of, of this sort of show that like everybody's eyes seem to be fixed on. It was kind of like, all right, it'll be worth it. They'll get there. It'll make sense in the end. Right. We'll, it, it like, has always worked out in the past. And so it shall be again. Right. And and then, you know, at least as as far as the present to this day, it, it kind of feels like now it just sort of it, it feels as though it just sort of tripped at the finish line yeah. is kind of what happened. Yeah, um, for sure. There, there definitely is this like like I, a very frustrating at times like situation where like you it, it looks there when people see a movie, there is this like attitude by certain kinds of critics that whatever the masses think that what they must have the different opinion right like be, like that is how they will set themselves apart from the masses so it's like 90 percent on rotten tomatoes no obviously everyone doesn't get it this movie is bad for all these reasons that only i the special person understand <laughs> and it's right, like right. okay versus uh, the exact opposite it could be like 40 percent crit- mass score and it's just like okay clearly this movie actually struck a chord on things people are not capable of getting because they are not as special as me and so i will tell them that it's actually good 
good god good thing i'm here uh, and yep, it's like yep. there is this like weird complex that develops and like only like you know it seemed like for a long time like or well like there there are occasions where like it would all come together it would just be like yep this movie is so unequivocally good that to have said like toy story 3 was bad that would that would call me the critic out i can't do it right. everyone loved it and it was good and they were right okay we're all on the same page on this one right you yep, know but yep. whatever yep no um, so but so anyway yeah i mean going going back to those early days and, and sort, sort of back to my original point was like yeah i do think that there was like a certain amount of of like the review process where it was like you're i don't know i don't know i don't know if i was like trusting myself enough or like willing willing to give myself enough like uh like credit because like at the end of the day we're not filmmakers like we don't understand films from like a technical perspective we don't right. like you, we don't pay as much attention necessarily like to the the aspect ratio that's being used or like what that says about like you know what you're witnessing or how it relates to like cinema at large you know we're we're like much more like like lore based and it's yeah. sort of like on some level it's sort of like that must mean that like if we focus on lore i understand that like from like a super critical like you know technical standpoint it may not be like the most like uh like vital factor in determining the quality of a film or it's not taking enough of the factors of an over overall film right but it is what we focus on right and therefore it's like at this point in time it's almost like i might i might just need to trust myself enough to be like you know what if the lore doesn't line up properly then it doesn't give you the positive viewing experience that you're looking for. Like if you're going to establish like an in-world rule, you want to keep by that rule and you want that rule to make sense always. Right. If there's glaring and gaping plot holes, then it's hard to focus on how great the cinematography was. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 So, and, and that's, that's probably like one of those things where it's like, uh, you know, I mean, everything is subjective when it comes to your enjoyment of anything. If you enjoyed it, that's all that matters. Like, yeah, then, then good. Like there's nothing better than you as an individual finding something that you like, but we also know that not all things, all people like, like right. it just, just doesn't work that way. Uh, so anyway, um, but yeah, so back to back to treasure planet, which, which I again, have not seen. <laughs> um, I think I am very, I, I think that it's the type of thing where I don't think I have such high expectations. Like I'd go in, I would give it an honest go at this point in time. I do believe it will be good on the basis of all of the prevailing opinions that have ever come my way. Like I would say most people either have not seen it or love it. Uh, or like the the, yeah. the the two the two stances I've seen. It's like oh my god, I never saw that one. It's like it's because it exists during that same phase of Disney releases that included um, Atlantis like, and, and Ember's Bolt and, Groove and, and Bolt. Dinosaur. Yeah, I did try to watch Bolt and I did get bored. Um, and I know that that's one that has like a high Rotten Tomato score. And I'm like, it must get better. Yeah, at like, some point. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. I haven't seen Bolt either. So yeah, yeah. Not um not uh this the the section of disney's past that i am the most familiar with despite what we do for a living yeah yeah yep. it's always interesting oh but you know what this feels like a good transition into some wicks of the peak hey i okay. don't know if you have any but i have been busy watching all sorts of stuff over here i i saw uh, i saw your list and it, it your list for your wick of the peak which is supposed to be a thing is like a paragraph it's i know i was just like every every week i was like i'm just gonna you know what there's a, i can't believe how many things i'm watching at the moment so i can read them all off if if you want but um this is like for things that like i'm un uh, the, the one that like blew my mind recently was the live action show for uh one piece one piece which is um like like we're, we're familiar with the the tiktok content creator um uh, straw hat goofy straw hat goofy and i i believe that the the uh aforementioned straw hat yeah is a reference to a character from one piece yeah so okay. the character in question is straw hat luffy oh okay yes. so i didn't so even realize I, how close i know yeah i'm like straw hat goofy i'm like oh that's so fun the straw hat is a reference to to one piece and the fact that the main character wears a like a straw hat or something not even realizing that goofy rhymes with luffy got it, the yep, main okay. character's name I'm like ah okay all right that is okay it is a better it's a your your name is even better right but so like um the the anime itself is like over a thousand episodes deep you know right it has right. been going on for a long time it is a super popular like long-running anime and it's like it's it's one of those things where like if you're into like any amount of like like nerd culture at all there's no there's simply no avoiding the the imagery of one piece a little bit right. like certainly even like you have seen Luffy, the guy with the straw hat, he sort of has a crazy look in his eyes and black hair and the red vest and the 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 you know uh jean denim joggers, you know. Okay, okay. And 
Like I've seen that character so many times. And like, I I've heard people talk about one piece, a card game recently came out where people have been playing it and stuff. But like I had literally like I, that, that is as much as I knew. Right. I knew that there was an anime called one piece and that the, the guy with the straw hat was the main character. Like that's it. Right. You know, which is surprising. I would almost say given like how like prevalent and popular the show is in general, but like, um, so the live action just came out on Netflix and just going through like TikTok. every now and then I would come across like uh, the algorithm would feed me like a clip from the show. Okay. And I wouldn't even know what it was at the beginning like i'd just be watching and be like what is what is this from and like on the three or four occasions that it happened i would just be so drawn in and it was just like whatever this show is looks freaking awesome like it's and then i finally realized like it was one piece and i was like okay well tiktok is doing its job but this isn't even one piece advertising it's just other people posting clips of the show and i was like i'll give you know what i'm gonna give the first episode a try i have no idea what it's about still other than these a few clips i've seen but I fired it up on Netflix and learned for the first time that One Piece is an anime about pirates. Okay. More than I know, right? Okay. And I was like, oh, it's about pirates. Okay. And then it's like, it starts off and there's this back story and it's about there's this guy, Gold Roger, who was the legendary pirate king and he achieved all you could want in life. And he had the biggest treasure of them all, but he'd been caught by the Marines and he was being publicly executed. And his final laugh was that there's this giant crowd that's come to see Gold Roger be executed because he's so beloved and so rich and wealthy. And he just announces to everyone that he hid his treasure somewhere out there for anyone to go find and that's like his final words and it's like oh and so then they kill him but it starts this like age of the pirates because everyone wants to go find his treasure okay so that's what happens that's the setup for the show and the treasure itself is called the one piece hence the title Uh, so everyone's searching for the one piece or whatever and that's basically what luffy is searching for the one piece but so i'm watching i'm like okay cool awesome and then luffy shows up and they start having a fight and every i mean everything in the show there's so many shots where you can tell it's taken directly from the anime the characters look ridiculous but it's in this like whimsical charming like way everything's yeah everything's so stylized but like you know why it's stylized and like it all plays by the same rules of the world it's taking place in and it just works really well that's awesome um which is super fun but then you know he gets into like his first his first you know scuff his first uh his first fight or whatever yep and suddenly luffy just like it turns out he he's just made a rubber and he just has like stretchy arms like Mr. Fantastic or something. Okay. And I know. And I was like, what is happening on this show all of a sudden? How is it? How is it that I have made it this far and been this adjacent to this property and did not realize that it is an anime treasure hunt about superpower pirates? Like, how do I not know that at all? <laughs> like. I, I yeah, and I've got you know no, I mean? I've got nothing for you. I yeah, I know because I'm I'm in the exact same boat. Like this is this is like one of those things where like you kept dropping new bits of information, and I was literally like, my, I feel like my draw my jaw was like comically dropping as you kept like including like, oh, it's about pirates. Oh, okay, and there's a treasure. Oh, okay, yeah. like and he and he has stretchy arms. Okay, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just like, and it works, and it works. It is like it works unbelievably well. Like, I honestly, the further I got into it, Luffy the character, I freaking love him. The actor does such a good job. He's like so. He's like Ted. I mean, honestly, I it reminds me a lot of Ted Lasso in that he just sort of like is so optimistic at all times, and it's like he keeps running into these characters that have all these like demons in their past, and it's just like he just believes in their dreams so hard that like everyone's better for knowing Luffy. Oh, and I it's love like, that. I know. I and it's like, that. but of course, and you're like, what's in, what's in your, what's in your history, Luffy? Like what happened to you? Right. And it's like, you know, he gets a lot of background screen time and you're like, Oh, poor Luffy. You know, you've, you've had, you've had some demons to conquer yourself here. But like in the meantime, it's just fun watching the whole team together. And they're all I've got such wild personalities and they're all, hilarious and i would just super duper recommend the live action one piece which i want to say it's only eight episodes long i think that covers about 60 episodes of anime wow so i know anime i mean that was one of those things when you're watching like if you ever watched like dragon ball or something like goku versus frieza takes like 20 episodes or something it's just like this is this fight
fight has lasted way too long. Right, you know? right, yeah. Because yep. it also took 20 episodes of Frieza beating up Goku's friends just for Goku to get there, you know? And it's like, <laughs> it's like oh, come on. Like, get there already. Get I, to the fight. I can't I can't imagine going like, like how often does an anime usually come on? Like, like is it like as frequently as daily? I or? think it's like once a week, so once, I don't Oh know. my gosh, yeah. I can't imagine yeah. like getting through like half a year and being like, like, dude, okay. we gotta get to yeah. the end of this fight already, man. Like, throw the spirit bomb at him already. It's been four episodes. But anyway, I digress. The point is, um, even if you know nothing about the One Piece anime, even if you don't like anime, I think you would like the live action One Piece. And I I cannot wait for the second season. I thought the first one was amazing, and I like all. It was just really fun. So that's my that's my wick of the peak. It does make me wonder whether or not, and and I have no idea why um but i feel like i feel like pirates in general as sort of like a like a like a collective sort of uh like infatuation almost feels like it's like on this like rise like i feel like it's not even the first time in the past couple of weeks where something pirate related has almost like simmered to the surface yeah and and i don't know if like you know i mean speaking of like game of thrones and stuff like that like i don't know if like we've lived through like a really big like medieval time or um like even like you know alice uh you know sort of at one point in time introduced me to like you know pride and prejudice and bridgerton and you know like a lot of these like period piece related like phenoms that have sort of like caught fire and become super popular and like you've seen like a whole bunch of different like you know uh outreaching arms sort of like yeah building up that concept like you know, we grew up uh, in the early 2000s during the release of like the Pirates of the Caribbean films, and it felt like during that period of time, pirates came like like real <laughs> big again. Like they became yeah. like super prominent once again, uh, and, and very like in vogue. And then like they've sort of dipped out. But like like everything. It, it's almost just like a wheel. It's like yeah, you're just wheel. sort of like waiting for it to like it's come back around back. again. And and so something. So I, this is this is me just speaking with no other basis. I don't have that much to go on. I'm just like, are pirates about to be like back in? Is this about to be like another? You know, like I feel like pirates versus ninjas. Was that like a thing for a while Dude, or something? I, it, my entire background with pirates versus ninjas is that in the early days of Facebook, pre like even maybe newsfeed. Okay. I think like there you could like add, or maybe just around the time like newsfeed became like a thing or your timeline or whatever you want to call it. Um, there was, you could like add apps to your profile page yeah, and like they could, I mean, they were wild and wacky and eventually they, it was like, I would almost like judge people. If I scrolled down someone's Facebook page and they had like 50 apps on there, I was like, you, you gotta, you gotta rein it in friend. This is, <laughs> that's, um, that's this is too, too much. Apps, this is yeah. too many apps. This I, is too many apps. I remember having a whole conversation with someone once and they were, I was like telling them, I was like, you gotta, you gotta like call this. And they were like, maybe I can consider getting rid of like maybe these two or something but i don't know like these are all pretty important to me and i was like dude there's no way incorrect i do i remember i have i have two (laughs) funny stories about this and i would say the first one was that uh during my college days at school there was this like aquarium maintenance game that you could play yeah do you remember this i do so circa probably 2010 for me um and like i remember i became like super obsessed with it it was like one of these things where like you would gain points or credits or in-game currency or whatever by like by showing up at all the like dedicated times and like making sure to like feed your and like wipe down the glass and like you know yeah. like clean the tank and stuff like that yes. and then you could like gain points additionally by like how many um like invites you sent to your specific friends and you could do like up to 20 a day and so like this was like i mean it was getting me yeah. so you could bad. like you could like visit your friends tanks and if you cleaned them for them you get extra points and stuff like that yes yep. yeah and i remember this game because i was i was also right there with you on it i know i was i was yeah i was so obsessed with it and i think at some point in time what i realized was that back on older computers and, and i mean maybe maybe you can still do this i don't really know but like the the um plug-in or the the multimedia player or like whatever delivered this game to facebook uh was not so sophisticated that it could account for you changing the date and time on your computer oh and so it was using your computer's information to determine how much time had passed since your last like visit to your you know to oh your so tank. you were like start hacking it so i basically started hacking it by by going through and I would change the time to like yesterday and then I would fast forward it back to present time and like my tank would be like fully dirty again so I could clean it again yeah. and like feed my mm. fish again and then it was just like I would like literally sit there like on my laptop in college in bed doing nothing but just like going back and forth like, yeah, like, like gaining points gaining like hundreds of days of, of yeah. cleaning ability I, yeah and I forget exactly like what what like what dictated whether or not you were like further ahead of someone 
else in the game. I think you could unlock new species of fish, new species that, of you fish could, that you yeah. could put in your tank. Yeah. And, and some of them were like so far along, um, like a mandarin goby, for example. Uh, a mandarin goby, if you've never seen a picture of one before, like it doesn't look like nature could create such a, a color scheme. Like it is one of the most gorgeous, like individual, just like naturally occurring specimens in my my personal opinion and like even with uh, like selling aquariums like i can't tell you the number of people who set up tanks because they saw the mandarin goby and they wanted a like a place to house one themselves yeah and i so i feel like unlocking the mandarin goby uh as as like a a fish to have like prominently displayed in your aquarium was like a like an achievement of sorts oh, oh my uh, gosh of course I, what i specifically remember about two things about that game in particular because yeah i was I, I, did, I was not hacking it to go back and forth and travel through time or whatever. Right. But like, I do remember going back and mathing out exactly like, cause you could like breed the fish and then like sell them. Yeah. And I remember yep, yep. like figuring out which fish was the most like valuable to sell versus like, like, the time it took to get the fish because like if you made them breed it would take like oh this one takes like seven hours to make a new fish and this one takes like 12 days or something or whatever right right you know so sometimes you had to like really go on the clock or whatever but i think it was clownfish or something so i remember that like i, I was just like farming them so that you could sell all the offspring and get tons of currency that way nice and i remember doing that but i remember the other person who played this um regularly with us was our cousin uh mike yep yep and Absolutely. i remember like just constantly constantly being like baffled that like because i was i was on it you know i you know i would get in yeah about not i wasn't like hacking the system or anything but i was making sure i was doing all the things every single day i got sucked in so hard to it and i would always go to mike's tank and he was like he remained like the same number of days ahead of me no matter what like yes. it was like i could not believe like i'm putting so much effort in that like i am positive at some point you were gonna just miss a day or miss something or just forget about it and i will like surpass you and it just never happened and, like and it was Swiss like clock, yeah. and it was like Mike is so on top of it. I cannot believe how, like as on top of it as I am, so is he. And I can't believe it. And it's like I what is he like I, I it was just baffling to me and it's like maybe this is maybe this is part of that Weinman family line. It's just like ridiculous dedication to something stupid. That, no, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's so that's coming from our our mom <clears throat> side of the family where where this yeah, doesn't come yeah, from yeah. as well. So our our shared heritage on that front. Yeah. Um but yeah, no, you're you're, you're exactly right because I think I remember this was an, I think it's hilarious that you found the best strategy and I found out how to hack it. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> it's like, I'm going to break the system yeah. because, uh, you know, this, this isn't working for me. So, uh, but I do remember, I felt like, uh, there, there was this like, uh, I was like, I cannot believe how effective this app is at getting me to do mm -hmm. exactly what it wants me to do. Because like, I have not been like, I, I've talked about this before. Like I've been off social media now for a year and a half. Um, but prior to that, like even as a consumer of social media, I was, it was very, very, very infrequent that I would, um, like like or comment on things because it was almost like I was aware of the optics associated with it and it was sort of always like like you know it was it was always just like well if I like this photo then like what will that say to everybody else who realizes that I've liked that photo as if everybody's paying attention to the photos I've liked yeah um but I was it was like it was always in the back of my mind so I was extremely like aware of like what my like digital presence was like and but like this goes back long before that and it was like I was going through and I had like my 20 people each day that I was willing to send the the game invite to yeah uh and it was sort of like it was like i know that i'm blowing up your feed right now yeah. and it it like i'm justifying it because i care that much right like, yeah. i'm going to win <laughs> this has got me sucked in it's on uh and and so i was like i was doing everything you were capable of doing every day which i always found to be absolutely hilarious um and so to mark that story dead, uh, moving forward, the other one that I found to be really, really, really funny was uh, we went through this stage uh, sort of like as cell phones were becoming a bit more prominent, you know, as like a like an everyday carry type of object. And even just sort of like with with texting sort of growing in prominence where like when, I remember when they first started advertising texting, like a common text plan for a month might be like 100 messages to like to like 250 messages, which like I'm sure anybody if you were to see how many text messages you send daily, you know, like I, I suspect lots of people would blow right past that yeah. because in the early days, it almost seemed like texting was much more like paging somebody. Like you might just say like, like, are you there? Right. You know, and like, 
Yes. Like, and, and the idea was sort of like, if you had a family member who was traveling, you know, to a different city for a conference, like you might, you might not call when you arrive, but it might be like, Hey, did you make it? Yes. That, and that, that was and, it. And that was the discussion. Like <laughs> then, then, you know, you person at home knew that the like fellow person you cared about successfully made it to where they were supposed to go. No more information right. necessary. Didn't like, need to go through an entire phone call. I only need one bit of information. Yeah. Right. I think this is twofold because the, like at, in the early days of cell phones, the main people who had them were like adults. Yes. And that, yes. and like they were accustomed to calling everyone for everything. And so it was like that it just wasn't the way they were used to communicating. And then on top of that, the way in which you texted back then was with the nine number pad yes, yeah, system. So yeah. like you had to like really think about how to text and like I have to press five, three times, wait for it, six, to, you know, just like to, to spell anything out was like a bit of an effort if you weren't used to it. Yeah. But then like the slowly as they became more available and more like younger and younger people got them and they got them and like weren't used to having access to a phone all the time and like texting became faster and because they just learned how to do the thumb typing really quick on the nine pad it was like boom you could go so much faster and that i feel like as those people got older it really exploded exactly and and i think for me that was exactly what was like unfolding so like you know bringing your cell phone to the dinner table for the most part like mom and dad didn't really have any like major rules against that because it was sort of like what you're not going to take a phone call in the middle of dinner like that that was obviously like prohibited or like whatever like you know you mean you know like if somebody called your house phone there's really nothing you could do about it but like it seemed like your own phone it was sort of like if 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 somebody's calling you during dinner you just like waited right but like because texting was still so on like the forefront the idea of like busting your phone out like sitting there having a conversation with a friend while you're at the dinner table like i don't even think people knew how to like police against it because it was still so like new like 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 it didn't i don't even know that like super occurred to mom and dad at first that like that like you would bring your phone to the table and therefore like might engage in a conversation with somebody in the same way that like if like we talked about like aol instant messenger the same way if you're sitting on your keyboard or something and like having a a, a chat back and forth with somebody but that was slowly on the rise and i i in particular i think really started texting a lot um i think that like at one point in time i i sent like I want to say it was like 20,000 text messages in one month. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. It was like an absurdly high number. Um, I, I was just like absolutely like addicted to it. And it was sort of like the thing where it was like, it was, it was like the little dopamine hit that I feel like sometimes you get from like scrolling social yeah. media. It's like, it's like at any point someone in time, texted me, somebody texted me like, <laughs> I'm like, good. Cause somebody wants to talk. That's exactly. Awesome. Like, yeah. you know, uh, so all throughout the day, every day, it was just sort of like, like a constant dialogue with, with, you know, a few people or something. Um, and as that started to become a problem, mom and dad started to notice and they were sort of like, yeah, no phones at the table or like, you need to put your phone down. And the, the, hilarious irony of the situation uh was the eventual state where where these apps started to become so prominent through facebook and our dad at the time being like the this like local newscaster actually had a kind of large following um on facebook yeah because he was this like public figure and i think for a period of time it was like his followership or something was like actually even capped like he could oh, only yeah, have like, he like could only have like because because it wasn't followers it wasn't it was just it was just friends yeah it was I just think. friends i think it was like five you couldn't have more than like five thousand friends or something which yes. almost no one was ever hitting the cap because that's just so many people right but like um this was before like uh public figures might have had pages or something right yes yeah yep, so pages. now so, it's not a problem but but yes I, I do remember it was like funny like you know we'd be like grilling burgers or something and it would almost be like a game for dad to be like i'm gonna go post the picture of the burgers and you know like we'd be like sitting there like through dinner or whatever and being like oh my god it's got 50 likes like that's ridiculous yeah <laughs> um you know and it was and, and it was i mean it was just so weird to like watch it unfold um but th- hilariously because dad sort of all of a sudden like as a public figure and and sort of like doing whatever like was getting this like quick outreach and he was a pretty fast adopter of like the concept he also inevitably found himself downloading one of the games which yeah. was i think like farmville farmville or, yeah a little more traditional a little yeah. more traditional uh, um, we were, i think what we were playing was just a different version of farmville effectively it, yeah for all intents and yeah. purposes like you know in, in farmville what you would do is you'd have like your little farm and you'd have a set amount of currency and you could go and plant like fields of corn and then like you know three days later your corn would be ready to harvest and if you went and harvested it you could sell it and buy more seeds and then you could plant more stuff and have a bigger farm um and <laughs> rinse repeat forever <laughs> rinse repeat forever basically like it never ends and it's always fun um but it's like like our dad who i would say for the most part like growing up like didn't ever really super you know get like 
Yeah, I think he would occasionally play like Mario Kart with us or something, but it, it never really seemed like like video games was like his his like thing. But at somewhere along the way, like after being told for you know a few years at this point, like Ben, no texting at the table, no texting at the table. We're gonna go put your phone away, like right. whatever. It was sort of like all of a sudden, Dad was like, "Well, I have to harvest my corn." Right, you hold on. Yeah, and it was this like hilarious like. What? What? Like, uh, yeah, like, I've been sucked into the farm bill, haven't you? Yep, yep. So, <laughs> but it, it was, a, I think it was a fairly brief phase in the scheme of things, but it was really, really funny to like watch, to watch it like 180 in such a hilarious and like unimportant way. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, so, anyway, sorry to add to, to, out you as a uh, as a Farmville player. There you go. Um, Once sure upon a time, some amazing high we were all there. there. Um, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. But um, dad, who kind of like grew up, you know, on, on, a similar to a farm, you know, I could, I can see where it would be like, like it would hold some, oh, I some additional appeal. I mean, yeah. So anyway, um, it all dates back to pirate versus ninjas. Oh yeah. When sorry. all <laughs> those, when all those apps were like sort of like first emerging, it was like I, it to, to my understanding, at least my experience, it was the first app that achieved like widespread popularity in like a, in like a common way. Okay. And it was just you just downloaded it and it was I mean, it was the most basic thing in the freaking world. You just downloaded it and it was just called Pirates vs. Ninjas. And you just chose whether or not you were on Team Pirates or Team Ninja. And then those those two teams were in competition across the entire website of Facebook. Oh, wow. Man, Ever. I, yeah, th- I, this <clears throat> is like tickling the, the faintest ends of my memory. But like I literally like I would say I barely remember this. Yeah. So basically, yeah, it, you just choose which side you were on. And then just every single person I knew's profile included the app Pirates vs. Ninja and which team you were on. And just periodically one side would gain more followers than the other. And that was the whole, it wasn't a game you could even interact with. There wasn't anything you do to like get the ninjas more points or the pirates more points. It was just, are, are you on the team that's winning at the moment? Are you team pirate or team ninja? Wow. And it was, I don't know what it was about putting those two specific things against each other or like what, what it tickled in everyone's brain. Or if it was just like the first fun thing that was different on Facebook, that wasn't just like posting pictures and comments and stuff, but it definitely caught fire. And as far as I know, that's sort of the origin point between between pirates versus ninjas okay, but, um, okay yeah like this is like one of those things too though it's so funny because like it's it's interesting to see something introduced to the world the ways in which we thought it would be used in the very beginning and the ways that it would ultimately evolve over time based on like what actually ended up like being important to people or like what things like could be fun at first but like ultimately like once you've done it once you've done it a million times and like therefore like it's just sort of like fizzled and it's like well you know I mean, it was fun the first time we did it but like but like I mean, we don't have to keep i want to keep one of these going like it's not like we have like pirates versus ninjas 2023 no like, yeah it's like you know something that everybody is actively engaged in. I, I bet it exists out there somewhere i'm but. sure it does yeah but so that one that one is sort of the first one and then there's you know there's a bazillion offshoots where i mean if you wanted to you could be on you know team batman versus superman or team you know cl- clowns versus jugglers or something i don't know right but like right. you know it's like okay pirates versus ninjas was cool now there's like uh, 50 other ones and it's just like it's not as cool anymore yeah it kind of like yeah. dilutes the field a little bit yeah. so that's that's, that's very interesting but so it's actually a perfect segue though um at, like for the the other thing that you and i have going on so to 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 zoom out of like the like you know early 2000s more to the modern era um you and i are about to engage in like sort of a grand experiment for the next few months mm-hmm. um which is that like which is TikTok essentially? Um, you've TikTok, heard of it. You, you've heard of it, no doubt. Um, TikTok is uh, obviously, I'm sure, doesn't need any introduction whatsoever. But it's a platform that, like, for us to do, you know, the job that we do, it's something that we're we're like rather vacant on. Th- like, yeah, we've we've done a handful of them in the past. We we've tried to, like to sort of like take some of our content, turn it into like a TikTokable, uh, like we shoot it in TikTok formats. We like write a script specifically for the the TikTok, so it's not just like clipping our current theories, you know, into something else. It's it's like a dedicated. Um, form yeah, production yeah yeah dedicated production and the ones that we've done in the past have, have done you know reasonably well and you know, like we have like a like a, a following i think somewhere in the proximity of like two hundred and fifty thousand followers um and the but like I, I don't think we've regularly posted to it at all for six months plus yeah um like it's sort of just like a, a here and there occasionally we're like we'll, we'll, we'll be like hey we should make one and we'll do it and we'll post it and then we'll, we'll all have fun watching to see like what it does or how yeah. it does and 
that's it. That's sort of it. Yeah, it'll be like even if it does extremely well, it'd be like, oh my gosh. Well, I think we had one that's like that. They got like eight million views or something. Yeah, yeah. And it was like this is insane. You know, you'd think that would motivate us to be like, let's do, let's do more. Let's try and keep the train rolling. It was like, man, that one did really well. That's so cool. Well, all right. Yep. Guess that we'll just it. get right off TikTok. <laughs> that was it. No, I, I think we posted a few follow-ups, but we immediately did that thing where it was sort of like we, we uploaded something. We got like a basis for like what success looked like, and then we uploaded like a few more, and it was like, you know, clearly what had happened was we got real lucky on our first one, and it just sort of like went, and then the ones that we did after were doing extremely well, but by comparison, less good, mm-hmm. and it was sort of like, eh, oh, well. You know, if we're, if we're not going to hit the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. if it's not going to be 8 million every time, what's the point? Right. It's like, it's like beginner's luck, basically just like completely diffusing any interest in, in like doing, you know, it's like going out and tr- like playing golf, swinging it for the first time, miraculously hitting a hole in one and then being disappointed every other time it hits you like four. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like, it's like, well, dude, the first time was sort of like, I mean, that's yeah. not like really a fluke. Yeah. You know? Um, so anyway, I feel like the saga that that like I, I invite you to it to attend along with us is basically just we we have decided to like to stop paying so much attention to like you know how this one does versus that one like whatever we're just going to go through and for the last ninety days of the year twenty twenty three we're starting again at about two hundred fifty thousand followers we're just going to upload one of our theories rehashed into TikTok TikTok format every single day for the end of twenty twenty three and just sort of be like how did it do how did it do like, what happened we gave TikTok a real solid try okay yes yeah yeah it's and like then, it'll, uh, yeah we'll see how it does it'll it'll either work and become th- become something or we can we can like walk away from it and sort of be like all right yeah we're walking <laughs> to 2024 we're tiktokers now that's it that's it now yeah the the, the <clears throat> yeah the, the giant leap from from one thing to the next but so yeah, I, the I, leap no one's doing I mean, we go we go to all these other events and all the tiktokers are like how do you get on youtube man what do you do i know yeah, yeah. It, it, it is really really funny and and it's so it's so wild because like you know you look at youtube and and near as we can tell it seems like longer form content it's almost like if you're a fan of short term short form content then you've probably left the platform and are now using tiktok because it has short form content and then it's sort of like as we make more long form content on youtube it's almost like the things that are now even longer tend to do even better right and it's like it's like clearly what has happened is people who like short form went to this platform people who like long form are still here and want even longer form right um so it's 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 very interesting to see sort of like like the the evolution as time goes on sort of like like where and how these like uh media consumer behaviors and habits are like are are shifting underneath us just just actively yeah you know which i don't suspect is is likely to stop happening anytime in the near future yeah unlikely I'm just gonna keep going so anyway if you don't already follow us on tiktok and you would like to see just uh, the whole bunch of stuff over the next three months then we got just the thing for you. So we just at, sure do. At Super Carlin Brothers. Yeah, give us a follow. Thanks in advance. There we go. The other thing you can go follow us on is we just launched our brand new podcast, which if you're listening to this one, hey, great news. We have another podcast. We do. It's called Through the Gryffindor, an idea we actually talked about for the first time on this show. We did, yeah. <coughs> yep. yep. Doing doing sort of like the chapter by chapter read through, which honestly has been really of the of the entire Harry Potter saga. So it's been pretty cool so far. We've got the first three episodes are officially live as as we're recording this one and then we've uh we've recorded the fourth one yep we've recorded the fourth one so it's uh it's been really interesting because like our big thing about this one like when we like the pop sort of like we're we're, we, we usually would like like you know an episode to be about an hour but like coming into um the the through the gryffindor concept we were like chapter by chapter we've got like it's like it's just as long as we have things to say You know, so it's like it can be long, short, you know, like it'll just like the chapter or the episode length will be about as long as as we have something to talk about. Right. And we got through the the first two episodes and both of them cleared an hour and we were like, uh oh, (laughs) okay. like apparently we have a lot. We have a lot to say. I feel like third and fourth have have uh, have tapered down just a little bit. So um, we'll see. I'm sure we're going to have like a two hour episode at some point. Inevitably. Yeah. Inevitably. Yeah. Kings cross. (laughs) King's Cross, the, the, the man with two faces. Yeah, the man with two faces. Yeah. Yeah, that could be there too. That yeah, could be a big I'm, one. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, so um, but no, it's been it's been it's been another cool project because because yeah, for whatever reason we decided, and this is like how we're how we're kind of like entering the month of Oct- 
October is we have our uh, GoFest weekend, which we are doing two separate events for. So uh, GoFest is obviously on uh, October 14th where we're doing like the live, you know, popcorn culture episode this show uh the night before we're doing a live trivia event which you are more than welcome to attend on october 13th the green theater in roanoke virginia uh we've started our new tiktok saga of one tiktok per day for yep. the last three months of the year and a brand new podcast yeah <laughs> it's just like so it's whatever. like why, why not just, just absolutely barriers <laughs> it's gonna be great i can't wait do you ever get okay i've only recently heard this term and i and i i, I don't know how uh prevailing it is but the the term is the Sunday scaries. Oh, are, are you familiar with it? I'm familiar with the Sunday scaries. Yeah. The, just that like feeling of dread about like the upcoming work week or something. Yes. Or not even always work. So sometimes it's just like, I don't, yes, but yes. I but there's just like a lot on your agenda. Yeah. I, I feel like yesterday um, I was, I was having a, a, a good old fashioned case of the Sunday scaries. Cause mm-hmm. I was like, Oh, there's a lot going on. There in, is a in, lot in going on. Month. Yeah, including yep. including the one of the other things I have is um, I'm going back to the uh, When We Were Young Music Festival yes. uh, in Vegas in the middle of October. So we'll get through GoFest weekend, and then I'm going to Vegas for that. And um, last year, I had a lot of fun like putting together like my like my festival garb, you know, like what, yeah. my, what my outfit was going to be like. And the, when I bought that outfit, I was sort of like, well, this would be really cool. Like if I ever do like others of these, I could probably just like wear the same thing. It'll be yeah. fine. And then I was like, but now, now I wore it to this particular yeah, event already. It's, it's kind like, of a got a kind of a reputation to uphold. I know, you know? yeah, yeah. They're, can't they're, like you can't just like phone in a repeat. You know? I know, I know. Especially the my 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 huge win last year, and this was like it happened in like the first hour of being there. Mm-hmm. But there was this one guy that walked up to me, and he just saw my outfit outfit, and he was like, "You what?" Oh my gosh. And then he just walked away and he's just like, only in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, I am so proud wow. that that I gave somebody a Vegas experience as mm. somebody who is distinctly not from Vegas. Um, but so I, I it has it has created this standard in my head that I'm now like trying to uphold. Can you look can you live up to yourself? I doubt it. I highly doubt it. Mm-hmm. That was it was it was just like our TikTok success. Beginner's luck. I just got Beginner's lucky. Beginner's luck you went too hard too fast. But over the weekend I I was I had like this experience uh, that was that I feel like was monumental in in the world that we we exist in here in this corner of the internet. But I bought my first ever pair of Chucks. First pair of Chucks. The Converse. The Converse. Yes. 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 All right. Well, then let me ask you this because this is sort of a running theme in your life: is how long have you wanted to buy Converse? Oh, because if I this this feels like a Ben Carlin ha- finally came up with an excuse to buy something he secretly longed for forever, but was afraid to buy because he didn't have a valid reason. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 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 So succinct. Yeah. Very, <laughs> very accurate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, like, it's only been since 2004. Don't worry. Yeah. It's a big deal. It's, I mean, yeah, I've just been mulling around, yeah. just rolling around up there. Um, I used to text people from the dinner table and be like, oh, jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't say it's been, I wouldn't say that it's been that long. This is this is like one of those things where um, I see like whenever we go to like cons and stuff like that, I've noticed that like there seems to be like uh, Crocs amazingly have entered the fold um, as like a as a, a piece of garment that people tend to wear. Uh, Doc Martin boots seems like a really common one, sort of like the the com- like um, like the what am I trying to look for? They're like a real you utilitarian looking heavy black boot. Okay. Um, All right. Um, you've certainly combat boot is the combat look, boot. Okay. Com- I'm going to look them up. I, they don't cause something comes to mind. Doc Martens. Yeah. You'll, ahead. you'll, you'll know them when you see them. And then the other that I, I feel like I see people wearing are, uh, the Chucks. And you know, this is, this is always oh, one I of those things. Doc Martin boots. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so this is something that like, I have like for whatever reason I've never personally felt like I'd be able to pull them off in the way that lots of people do like mm-hmm. it's always seemed like so much more like in keeping with like the the personality of the person wearing them or whatever um and I was it, like in, in a way that is just right you know like it's like when it's right it's right yeah um and so I I think it's like one of those things like where I've never really known like what version of it I would do right. Like, like you're afraid if you wear them, like someone, someone who's someone who's more um, fitted to wear Converse is like someone's going to come give you a ticket and be like, I'm sorry, you just take those off, please. Like these, you're you're doing it. No, yeah, you're very right. Yeah. It's like you you have done this, and you know you clearly like, don't get um, it. You clearly missed the point. You're not you're not really one of us. Right. So we're going to need those. You've messed up. 
<laughs> hand over your, your hand Converse over card. your hand over your Converse right now. Okay, yep. those aren't for you. Right, those are for us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I will say I will say the movie I Robot. Once upon a time, there's like a like Will Smith's character is like all about like all things that are like like vintage yeah. or or like you know kind of hailing back to like the the pre robotics yes. era of of humanity and so like like the fact that he like wears them in the mm-hmm. film mm-hmm. is like a really cool thing that he's doing and i i will say that like in that moment i was like nice and that's pretty cool <laughs> um because it was like like it fits so well with like the character that they've like established you know for him and everything okay so you've wanted them since 2002 then when i robot <laughs> came out is what i'm seeing i would say that that was the first time i ever in admired them um, oh i'm sorry it was 2004 i'm sorry so you nailed it the first I time i nailed it the first time yeah there yeah. you go yeah. uh i robot no, film i i would say for a good long period of time like I, I was sort of just like comfortable with where they existed in the uh in the footwear realm but anyway so i did i, I there was like a like an aesthetic that i needed to find and i found the aesthetic that i was looking for and now i'm just trying to emulate the picture of the guy who wears them like uh, as perfectly as i possibly can okay i want to say is it the f- case that in the movie his um, converse are more of like a leather material and less of like the canvas material. I don't know. I would have thought that they were like the original canvas because that's like how I think converse came to be in the first place. Well, you know what? I'm looking at it now and I still can't tell. Let me but, see. Can I, know, can I, that's the one from the movie. Oh man. Yeah. It is really hard to tell from the photo, yeah. but the pair that he's wearing are, are a pair of black ones and mine are the ones that I got are like fully blacked out. So they're okay. like, like black nose, black soul, black. Oh, black you don't see. So it's not like the traditional, like white. It won't be like the white it front. Have the yeah, white yeah, yeah. front. It'll okay. be like fully black the whole gotcha. way through. So we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it, but it is, it is absolutely one of those things. Like it goes back to like growing out a beard for the first time. It's like no shape November. It'll be so fun. Plus I quietly want a beard. So I just want to see if it works. <laughs> I will tell you. So my experience with Chucks is that I've never owned them at all. Um, but there was, um, I remember in high school, the, the category of people that tended to wear them was, it was basically the entire marching band was like super the, into like Chuck culture. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It definitely seemed like the band always had them. Yeah. And I remember just thinking like a lot of times it didn't really, it, they always just looked like, I always thought it was like, you guys are wearing these more out of like a band, uh, com- you know, community rather than, I don't know, shoe choice or something, which is totally fine. It, you know, that's totally cool with me. I personally did not like them in high school. Sure. <laughs> I, thought it, I, I thought they just like looked dumb. But um, which is to say, I do want some now. <laughs> <laughs> but let me just say, um, uh, I will. Uh, my my wife uh, now, Beth, was was in the band at our high school. Yes. Yep. And I remember that she specifically would like broke the mold on the rest of the people in the band by owning a pair of red chucks. Oh, and I always thought like some like the even even before I was like interested in dating her when we were just sort of like friends in English class or whatever. I remember thinking like she's at least got cool chucks like everyone else is sort of like failing on it but she's like excelling at she, it oh, she's nailing yeah, it. yeah so yeah should have should have known then should have know. known then that was the moment so maybe yeah. maybe you and beth both invented the promposal and the prominence of red chucks that's basically it <laughs> yeah. that's, you know you're welcome i mean if, if if yeah if you two had not attended high school in 2006 what would our world look like what would it look like you, you guys know? have people clearly... would just be asking people to prom in these boring ways like hey do you want to go to prom with me Blah. that's how i did it every single yeah. time yeah. well yeah, every yeah. single time being like what twice Twice. Twice. How many proms did you go to? I think I went to three. Wow. I know. And did I know. you at you? So that means, okay. And you asked someone each time. I asked someone each time you. So that almost, so you asked someone to go to their prom at another school. No. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was asked to attend a prom at a different school. Okay. Right. So then you didn't ask that time. Oh, I didn't ask that time. I uh, I asked two out of the three. I thought okay. that's what you're asking. Yeah. So okay. to, to, to both of the proms, my junior and senior year, I asked, a date okay. to both of those. I was going to say bold to ask someone from another school to their prom. No, 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 no. That was that one. Honestly, it was it was pretty cool actually because I had a big group of friends from a nearby school in our area, yeah. and um, the uh, the guy that was supposed to go with the girl I went with, who was one of my good friends. Um, was like I think at the last minute he like bailed or something like that I think he had like already graduated had like been on board for like going back to a high school prom and like the last second was like I'm not doing it and just decided like that it wasn't worth wasn't worth going or something like that and so the group of friends had reached out to me and they were like hey you know like all of a sudden you know like this girl doesn't have like a date like like, would you be able to go like 
tomorrow. No. And I like, was like, uh, I, I was like, how did you get a tux? I wore dads. Wow. I know. Yeah. Which was which was super cool. Yeah. I was like, this is it. like because it, it was yeah, really funny. Guys, I got a cummerbund. I know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it did not even occur to me before that, I, like during my high school years, like I had officially like grown into like tall enough yeah. to fit into dad's tuxedo. Yeah, you might have it, even been too tall. It may, it may have been may just have a little been, bit, you know, yeah. Um, for a day's notice, you know. I know, but it was like, oh my gosh, this is this is like so fun. Yeah. Uh, and I was really excited. And so like when I went there, like one of the cool things they did at that school was like they introed like all the like the seniors. So the girl I was going, I was a senior, the girl I was going with the senior. And so like they were introing her and her date who was me. Uh, and I think I got a much more warm welcome at this other school's prom than I even did at my own senior prom. Oh, wow. <laughs> because all my friends, like you and, and our, our, like the GMA yeah. and everybody, had all graduated. Yeah. So I was like the youngest of the bunch and therefore, like when you guys all left, it was sort of like, well, yep. I don't have any yeah. friends. <laughs> That's it. I'm friendless now. <laughs> well, I still had friends. They were just elsewhere. They were just elsewhere. And they were on, they were clearly on Team Pirates while I was on Team Ninja. So yeah, I, mean, I should have right, flipped that. Sure. I was obviously on Team Pirates. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I think I don't know what team I was on back in the day. Back in the day. It seems like Ninja. Yeah. I can, I can feel I can it. It's just that. like oozing out of you. I want to say I was on Team Ninja. I know Beth would have been on Team Pirates. And I think I remember like talking with her about how we were like, you know, we obviously we should switch teams or whatever. Oh, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. You know, she felt like I should switch teams. And I was like, I don't know. Ninjas are so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like you wore, you even wore a bandana for a good stretch of time during this era of like high school and stuff. But like, I almost feel like you were wearing it more in a ninja capacity than a pirate capacity, even though I feel like a pirate can be commonly associated with a bandana. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're correct about that. Yeah, sort of had like the headband vibe going yeah, on. Yeah, I did sort yeah. of have the headband vibe going on there for a while. That's one of those I look back and I'm like, oh, was that a cool look? I have no idea. In my mind, it was. You know, <laughs> absolutely. But yeah, yeah but uh, also it was like it was actually like semi necessary because we had like the the Steve Prefontaine like sort of like mop pop, mop tops hairstyle. Oh yeah, yeah, going. And the problem was I really I needed to do so. I either needed to get a haircut or I had to basically wear the headband because the way it would go is like when I would run the front of my like my bangs would like stab my eyes. <laughs> yes, so I, I like it was very uncomfortable to not wear something. <laughs> so, stab me right in the eyes. Right in the eyes. And if you could imagine every step. So it was uh yeah, it was it was it was necessary, not just a um, you know, uh visual aesthetic choice. Well, and you know, sometimes <laughs> I feel like those are the ones that end up being like like it's like it's like it's like both utility uh and also at the same time just kind of cool yeah you know it's like not, you know. it's like like adornments that like don't do anything they're just adornments well i actually don't have this opinion towards it at all but i was gonna say it's like it's like the, the more that it can do i feel like from like a utilitarian standpoint it's just like it's like oh that makes it even cooler it's right like, yeah, it's yeah. like i get why they have it right um but yeah anyway so yeah, team team pirates. I guess uh, all, all team ninja. Way. You know, team ninja. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. Let us let us know where do you guys land? Where do you land? Maybe, team maybe ninja we'll, versus pirate. Maybe for for the day of Halloween, we will change all of the uh, the tiers over on Patreon from uh, Jazzy J and Buzzy B to ninjas and pirates. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> See if we get any good shake up towards the end of the month. Speaking of Patreon, we are officially inside of the month of October, which makes me so excited because we have um, our Q4 cur- quarterly merch already figured out already established and it is one of my favorite things that we've done so far um and it comes with a fun digital perk as well yeah, yeah. Uh, we are once again bringing back the D theme to close out 2023 with our q4 merch we are going to be doing another episode here in office with the team um of a DD campaign that will mm-hmm. be completely different from the one that we did uh last year so maybe i'll be a ninja oh i think you could be maybe i'll be a pirate wow or if uh, you want to be I feel like mean. we're I mean, as long as we're spitballing <laughs> um, but uh, the the uh, merch that we found to come with it last year, we of course did a dice set. This year we have it, it is like it's it's hard to even describe, but it's this like amazingly cool. It's a rocks glass, if you can imagine, so like a small uh, like drinking glass, but like literally like melt embedded into the side of the glass as yeah. if it's like almost like 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 as if it got like paused halfway through piercing the side of the glass is a uh metal d20 yes embedded so we'll have we'll have a link to it on patreon like some pictures and stuff like that so you can see what it looks like the glass itself will also have uh, the popcorn culture logo laser etched on it so you'll be able to like you know kind of showcase your your fandom there uh be the fir- the perfect accompaniment uh while you're listening to the the new episode yes. of the 
the new. If, uh, we'll we'll have a. I think we can probably put an image either on screen as we're talking if you're watching on YouTube or uh, just go check out the Patreon and we will have an image posted there. Absolutely, yeah. And it looks, but, we, but it looks. We have one in office. It is so cool. It is as if while the glass was being forged in 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 this like molten state, someone just took a, a D20 dice and pitched it as hard as they could, and it got stuck in the side with the 20 facing out perfectly. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? They threw a nat 20, and then it hardened that way perfectly. Yeah, it's just, it's it's just so really cool. cool. Yeah, like it's not like glued to the side. It's like no. embedded into the yeah, side of the glass. Awesome. So it's really, really neat. I highly encourage you to go and check it out. We'll have pictures like in, in all the places, and we'll have one posted to the Patreon um, at like no tier basis so that like you can get like a feel for what it would look like before you do any signups and stuff. So yeah. you can see it without being a patron if you'd like to. Patreon.com slash popcorn culture. That's going to be at the quarterly merch tier if you want to go and check that out. Um, but otherwise, guys, thank you so much for tuning in for 200 episodes. Yeah. Until next time. Pop, pop. Pop.